for us is going to be um, this, this, this Z move. Uh, we'll get stacks in. Oh, it's the. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Rank VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be starting with a brand new team. It is on the screen in front of you right now. There is a Raw Paste and a Poker Paste down in the description below. For you guys to check out and try out if you would like to, I can't take any credit for this team because this team belongs to a good friend of mine and a patron of the channel who won the Flinch Squad Invitational Championship over the past weekend. So this past weekend, if you didn't catch it, it is on Twitch. I will be uploading it to the channel and featuring those matches there, the commentary the whole evening, and uh, you'll be able to catch up with it there. But Will played throughout the whole Flinch Squad circuit last season. The Sun, the Moon, the Ultra qualified top seed for the Invitational and then went on to win it with this team here. So absolutely incredible run. A massive congratulations to Will once again. And to all of our other players that come Competed in the Invitational. It was just a pleasure to do the event. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, had Ben here co commentating with us, and it was um, a really nice evening. Um, and I hope for you that uh, that did catch it or go back and view it now um, that you enjoy the event on a whole. And any feedback from the event would be great to hear. Obviously, I will link the Twitch channel down in the description, and I will be starting streaming and a proper schedule coming up very soon. So uh, stay in tune. Well, stay tuned for that, I guess. So I hope you all had a weekend, a good weekend. And we're back a little bit later this week um, because of the invitation. I didn't have really much of a chance to record any content for Monday, Tuesday. So here we are, Wednesday. Content is here um, and we'll play this team. We'll probably play it on Monday as well because I'm away at a double MSS this weekend in Orpington. Cannot wait. Got to get some points on the board starting this weekend. So hopefully I do. We'll play this team on Monday and then we'll come back and I'll play my MSS team um, or teams next week on the channel. So... Without further ado, my friends, let's get into this one today. As always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. And uh, as always, leave your comments down in the description below uh, because I do love hearing from you. And even though I can't always reply because of time constraints, I will always read them, leave a little heart and like when I can. So uh, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. We'll kick off with Ultra Recon Squad. We've got a rating of 1620, not too good. I think the, the last week's team uh, didn't go so well, but we had a lot of fun with it, of course, um, and that is one of the things. And we found a lot out about the team that we were playing, um, but it's nice to move on to something else and something that we know is very successful. I'm really looking forward to playing this core. I mean, we saw Will in the Invitational do so well with it, and just it's got so many different modes to it and uh, so many explosive elements to it that make it very hard to kind of come back from. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent here today. And I think I'll make the conscious effort now of just cutting it right now and we'll come back when we find our first opponent of the episode. And we have our first opponent of the episode, Japanese player, 16-03 rated player. So we'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, so our first opponent today playing a team of Rayquaza, Kyogre, Tapu Koko, Incineroar, Cortana, and Stack Attacker. It is going to be that infamous Rayogre call, uh, very popular at the moment and for very good reasons, very explosive team. You've got supporting cast, you've got the Intimidate support there from the Incineroar, you've got a Trick Room check and a Trick Room setter and Stack Attacker. Um, explosive lead again between the Cortana and the Tapu Koko, and a very common call that you're kind of seeing in these teams and other teams at the minute with Kyogre is that Fire Water grass core between the Incineroar, Cortana and Kyogre. Um, right, what do we need to do here? Um, I've watched Will, so um, I should know what I'm doing. But what I think what we need to do, we need Intimidate support for the opposing Rayquaza, uh, Cortana and Sakataka. It's always going to be very helpful here. Um, or do we want to go with Tapu Koko first? I mean, one of the things we could potentially do is go Tapu Koko um, and Lunala it was a lead that we did see Will take advantage of quite a lot um, in the circuit. Um, do we want stacks here? I don't know if we do. We definitely need Rayquaza though. Um, and maybe, maybe Incineroar. Hmm. Or maybe our own stack attack. Oh, Amoongus could be good. I think Incineroar is probably going to be the better one of the. The three that we had left, so we'll go with this to kick us off today. 
I feel like I need to adjust to the team to get used to it, but um, I should have really asked Will a bit more about it. But I'm feeling like, from watching him play, I've got a good idea of how the team is meant to work. And we'll, um, we'll get through that this week on the channel as we're playing it. So, opponent is going to send out Rayquaza and Tapakoko as a lead. Um, and we'll send out Lunala and Tapakoko. So, got to watch out for Banded Ray, I guess, with the, the crunch. Um, that could be a bit problematic. Um, Earth Power as well could be an issue for us. Um... Now we could go for a Volt Switch, a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, we are choice specs, so Dazzling Gleam gonna do a lot of damage. Um, and maybe preserve our Lunala uh, for later on, switch into Incineroar. At least then we get an Intimidate onto this Rayquaza. And Rayquaza's tending to be more, I would say, on the physical side rather than the special side at the minute. So if I'm guessing anything, you can't discount that it could also have Earth Power. Which would we would lose Tapu Koko if it does have, but I mean we'll get a good chunk of damage with the Dazzling Gleam onto to both targets here. Um, a threat from Tapu Koko Speed Tire, guess if it's got Twinkle Tackle and it goes for for that into our Koko could potentially pick up the knockout there. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm hoping it wants to break the Shadow Shield on the Lunala, and then the the Rayquaza wants to to double tap into that slot, which you would imagine is the, the kind of the thing that you want to do in most situations because. Um, we threaten Trick Room set up there and if that goes up it makes life a little bit more difficult for my opponent to utilise their restricteds at least. I'm going to see Rayquaza Mega Revolve activate that Delta Stream. Uh, we are going to see a Dazzling Gleam from the opposing. Oh no, from us, so we win. We do some nice damage, uh, get a critical hit. Uh, Volt Switch coming out from the opposing Coco into our Incineral. Trying to break that Shadow Shield like I say. Um, um, kind of indicating that this is Assault Vest Rayquaza. Which isn't so good for us because if it goes for an Earth Power, then we are knackered. Knackered, I tell you. Um, Kyogre gonna hit the field, which isn't the worst thing. We've got Fake Out Pressure on this next turn, so we can at least quash that for at least one more turn. It's just about what this ray goes for. Um, Primordial Sea overwriting that. Uh, crunch. Okay, so that's. That's fine. I mean, like, out of everything, that kind of works out pretty well for us. Um, okay, so we are locked into Dazzling Gleam. Whether or not we want to stay in that or not is another thing. I think what we'll probably do is switch into our Rayquaza, and we will go for a Fake Out into the Kyogre. Just to prevent it getting a Water Spout off, um, because we don't want to lose Incineroar too early in this game. I think the Intimidate support, Fake Out support, is going to be quite important for late game for us, so... Um, we will see the opposing ray switch out as well and incineral come in. Ah, it's a bit of a shame because you kind of want to get your in your requiser on the field after the intimidates come out. Um which is a little bit of a problem, but it's not the worst. Um Because we can mega evolve. I think you have to fake out our ray here, that's the thing. Um Just what do we bring in? I don't really want to bring in Coco on a full power water spout, which my opponent's going to be able to get off now. Um, we could bring in Lunala. Because I don't think there's any threat of a dark type attack coming out from my opponent's Incineroar into our Lunala this turn. I think it's more important to go for the fake out into the ray and possibly water spout here. Right, we get them Delta Stream up. We'll just protect. Well, the Shadow Shield that gives us that little bit of leeway as well. There's the Water Spout, unfortunately, coming out. Um, instead of not going for a Fake Out, which is interesting. Kind of calling our bluff there, going for the U-turn into uh, Lunala. Probably going to be able to pivot back into um, either their Tapu Koko or Rayquaza here. Maybe the, the Tapu Koko, because if it's got the Ferium... Um, no, it's Rayquaza. Okay. I don't mind this too much. Um, and we are Berry Rayquaza. So, um, we're going to see an Ice Beam. I mean, is it a good time for us to go for a Sword Dance? I'm kind of tempted to go Sword Dance switch into Incineroar here. 
but I feel like we probably get doubled into from uh, the Kyogre Rayquaza. I'd like to reset our Intimidate drop as well. That's one thing I would like to do. We could bring an Incineroar here, um, and then we could go for just to protect, I think, with Lunala, and just try and pivot around. I want to reset the Intimidate drop. Um, we don't want to leave Lunala open right now because a crunch, if it comes into that slot, it will take us down, uh, even intimidated. So we don't want to lose Lunala. Um, and I don't really think the Kyogre is going to go for a water spot here unless they suspect us switching out. And they've got to worry about Wide Guard as well as an option. Um, but there's a crunch. Yeah. And Ice Beam. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Could have got away with a sword stance potentially there, but we don't need to rush it, I don't think. Um, right, let's fake out and. Oh, do we fake out the Ray or the Kyogre? I mean, the Ray probably is more likely to. We could fake out the Kyogre, we could double into the Kyogre here, because I think the Ray might switch out. It's just if it doesn't, then... I think the other thing is, we could probably get Tapu Koko onto the field. Uh, fake out the Kyogre. The only problem is, if Incineroar comes in now... Yeah, then we're in a little bit of a, 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 a sticky spot. Because we would have maybe been better going for a U-turn into the Rayquaza. And then we could pivot in something else. Because now we've got that active fake out on my opponent's side of the field. That is going to be able to fake out Tapu Koko. Yeah, and there's the protect. That's the only thing I was worried about and why I wanted fake out there. I didn't want to take a water spout if it didn't protect. Um, but it does, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Now we're in a bit of a sticky situation. Mm. I think we're going to have to lose something. And it's quite possibly going to be the Lunala. And uh, I'll bring in Ray. I'll, I have to pull a double switch, I think, here. Yeah. So I don't want to lose Incineroar. Uh, we've got ourselves into a bit of a bad spot here, um, so we need to try and alleviate it the uh, best we can. Requires are coming in, it will be able to take a water spout. Uh, Lunala, I'm not too sure, um, but we're not really utilizing Lunala very much in this match. It's not feeling like it's a key element to winning this game at the minute, so if anything can come in and, and maybe go down, it would be the Lunala. There's the water spout, so um, the, if it does go down, it doesn't. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think what we'll do is I really need to get. Hmm. I want to get some damage onto the um, the Kyogre to be honest. But is it likely to protect here? Because one thing I could potentially do is go Moonguys Beam into the Kyogre. Um, and just protect Rayquaza. Just I want that fake out support next to Rayquaza when I go for the sword stance before I start throwing out attacks. Because I want to be able to guarantee knockouts on things like Kyogre because I don't want to be taking an ice beam from this this range. Okay, we're gonna see protect. Maybe we see a U-turn out onto the Lunala. Oh it goes for that. Mm, okay. Not ideal, not ideal. Um, I think we're going to have to just double the Kyogre now. I mean, we could go wide guard, but it's likely going to go for... Um, it's likely going to go for an Ice Beam. And that means we will lose Ray. Okay, let's try it. Okay, Kyogre are going to go out. Like, I don't mind this too much. Tapu Koko coming in. Now we should get a Moonguys Beam uh, into Incineroar, which is not ideal. Okay, well, we'll definitely see a U-turn here. We maybe could have predicted there and went for a Sword Stance. You know? But, I mean, getting rid of the Koko is pretty nice for us. I think the next thing that we need to do is just get around... Um, the Incineroar's fake out, which is going to come in. You can guarantee. Okay, well, we do a little bit of damage there. It's not the worst, it's not the best either. We are going to lose Lunala now. Um, I don't think we bring in Tapu Koko just yet with specs. 
I think we just keep it back because we'll be in that same situation again if the Incineroar comes in with anything like Kyogre on this next turn where it can fake us out pretty freely. We can't protect. So Kyogre is going to come back onto the field. We're likely going to see the Incineroar come out as well. And I'm hoping... I need to refresh myself about the speed tiers, but it would be nice if we were the faster Incineroar. I don't know if we will be, because it means that we can switch into Tapu Koko uh, and reset our Intimidate drop. Okay, well, looks as though we are the faster one. So, yeah, taking out Kyoka is probably the best thing we can do here. Um, and get Koko onto the field. So, we'll do that. Fake out Kyoga, switch out Ray into Koko. Because we're just going to trade fake outs otherwise. That's the thing. Um, which I'd like to try and avoid. Um... There's an argument we could stay in and try and go for a sword stance, but I think there's more leverage in us resetting that intimidate drop that we've had onto our, our side of the field. And then the next turn, what we can try and do to keep ourselves ahead is go for um, uh, the switch into Rayquaza. Now, this is what my opponent's doing, getting ahead of us here, because um, we had to fake out the Kyogre, otherwise we lose Incineroar. Now, they kind of take advantage of that, making a really nice play, getting their Rayquaza onto the field. Um, meaning that we've got a little bit, it makes it way more difficult for us to um, to cycle our Intimidate again. And we can't really bring in our own Rayquaza right now. Um, but we can probably get the Kyogre. I will go for a U-turn into the Rayquaza to try and get that off there. Um, I could Discharge, but I think a Specs Thunderbolt is a, is a better option onto the, the Kyogre here. The Kyogre could protect as well. That's the other option that we could see. Or we could take an Earth Power, which wouldn't be good. <sighs> so maybe the Discharge would have been better, because that would probably proc the Berry on Incineroar. Oh, we're actually going to see Ray. Um, okay. I don't mind that. We might see Kyogre protect now. Yeah. But I don't mind this at all, because we get Rayquaza in. They haven't got the Intimidate now um, onto our Ray. And they can only fake out one target, so they're going to take big damage from something. I really wish I knew my Rayquaza cards because um, I would love to go for a Sword Stance right now. I think that would be a big play for us. Sword Stance. Can we take an Ice Beam from this range? Probably. I would say probably. But I don't want to... Um... I don't want to risk Fake Out Ice Beam because then it kind of really limits our Rayquaza's ability. I mean, I say that though. If they fake... They're going to have to Fake Out Coco, I think. We'll Sword Stance. We'll Sword Stance. And we'll go for a Thunderbolt. I'm just going to do it. There's a fake out into Coco. Okay. Now things start to get a little bit heated. Ice Beam. We need to take this though. That's the big thing. Rayquaza the Beast. Okay. We take it. Now we should be able to close this one up. Because Specs Thunderbolt. The Kyogre, we're going to Incineroar with a Dragon Ascent. We've got our Intimidate in the back. So we kind of cover the, the Dragon Ascent drop this turn um, to make sure that Extreme Speed the next turn from the, the Ray when it comes in is fine. Specs, Coco, picking up the knockout there. Whew. This one's been a bit of a slog to get around, but I think uh, we did make a little bit of a mistake earlier on, but I think we've got ourselves out of it, uh, letting the Lunala go down, um, and then taking that opportunity there to get that Sword Stance up. 
um, and that's how quick a match like this can flip on its head. Now we've got the, the Rayquaza to come onto the field for my opponent and there's not really too much they can do. We pivot out the Coco, get the Intimidate Cycle onto the opposing Ray um, and just Extreme Speed and plus two Extreme Speed from... Uh, is it going to... I don't know if we want to risk it. Probably... Um, do we just go Dragon Ascent? Because we've got Coco anyway, so it's fine. Uh, we'll just go Dragon Ascent. Um, I don't know if Extreme Speed will get it from that range. I'd be, yeah, a bit surprised. But there we see a full fit, and we pick up a victory. Do you proud, Will? And uh, show the team has got those mods to it. I, I'm a bit suspect to whether the Lunala was the right pick there. We maybe would have been better off bringing something else, but I still think Lunala gave us a little bit of a cushion when we needed it to. So it wasn't, I don't think, the wrong choice in all all aspects but I don't think it was completely the right choice either um, so a uh, nice one for us to kick off with today a bit of a longer one but uh, like I say sometimes the better matches are a bit of a slog and um, it's it's mad to think though it's like that one turn can flip and that's that's totally this format isn't it right we'll pick some music um, let's go with Hmm. Not Battle Royale. I'm not a fan of Battle Royale. Let's go on a Cosmo version 1. As we like of Cosmo version 2, but we, we don't tend to go on to that one very much. We, uh, <laughs> we'll keep that for special occasions. Because I spam it way too much. Um, but yeah, I think that match there shows like you can slog away. You've got to, it's, it's all about, in this format, really identifying and taking that little turn that can just twist it around for you. And um, you've got to be patient. I think that's another thing to kind of translate onto onto you guys as players, new players, even even uh, more experienced players. It's all about, a lot of the time, patience, not taking risks. I mean, look at Wolf, right? Wolf is a perfect example of someone that is, he's got like the patience of like, I've never, like, he will just keep going, keep going, safe, 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 safe. And then that moment where he knows, like he can identify a moment, a board position, a moment where he thinks, if I get this up now, it's safe for me to do it. I'm not going to lose anything by doing it. Then I will win this match. And it's all about that momentum, being very patient, methodical, and then just waiting for that one, maybe, you know, you're not going to get just one moment per match. There is multiple moments, but it's identifying the right environment, the right situation at the time for you to, to do that. There's not many people on battle spot today. Um, but we will continue to search. I'll cut it now and then we'll come back when we find our, uh, our first, our second opponent of the episode. So we'll be right back, my friends. We've got our next opponent. So Ethox. I didn't catch where from. 15.99 rated player. Oh, playing a nice looking team. Oh, nasty. Depending on how you look at it. But we've got Iveltal, Groudon, Gengar, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, and Shed Ninja. Um, okay, so we've got the Eveltal Groudon combination restricted pairing. Uh, very strong, covers each other nicely, especially because of the fire typing on the Groudon, Primal Groudon now. Then you've got the Mega Gengar, going to be the Mega of the team. Wants to trap in uh, our Pokemon, so I'll give him given uh, us less option to switch out, less synergy here, um, and punishing us where they can. Shininja going to be a bit of a pain to deal with as well, especially because combined with the Tapu Fini, you've got to be aware of the potential Sulk scenario. So we've got plenty on our team to kind of cover that, though. Um, one of the things I would say is, looking on face value at my opponent's team, Trick Room will do pretty well if we can get the Trick Room set up. It's just about covering... Um, our basis. So I'm gonna go Lunala, Tapu Koko. Um, do we want Incineroar here or do we want Stax? Stax could do some damage if we can get the Trick Room set up. Uh, we've got Wide Guard as well, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And uh, I think we always want to bring Rayquaza to these matches, to be honest. Um, I feel a bit weird leaving Incineroar, um, especially because there's two Dark types, but um, yeah, we'll go with this. And we'll see how we get on. Amoongus could have been a good one as well, because I think if we do see the Sark onto the Shin Ninja, then Tapu Koko comes becomes way more important for us. So we need to be very, very sure in ourselves that we're not allowing Tapu Koko to go down very freely here. 
Oh, this looks lovely, especially when you know that the Tapu Koko has got this charge. We can do some real work. Or we could just spec Thunderbolt the Veltal, couldn't we, in Trick Room? Oh, I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. Spec Thunderbolt. Mm. Are we going to get the Veltal Spec Thunderbolt? Not in terrain? Depends what build it is, of course. If it's a Salt Vest, then. Well, if it's a Salt Vest, then we've got an easier route to getting our Trick Room up. If it's Z-Move, then I think the Thunderbolt would get it. Um, we could be a little bit... Uh, well, hmm. What do we want to do? Do we want to just get the Trick Room up and get stacks in? I think we'll just try that. Um, and go for a Volt Switch. I don't think Yveltal is going to be able to take down Lunala here. Because I think it has to hit after the Tapu Fini. And I don't think it's going to be able to. The worst situation here for us is going to be... Um, the this, this, this Z move. Uh, we'll get stacks in. Oh, it's the. Uh, why? Why? <laughs> of course. We should have just thunderbolted it. God damn it. Uh. Will, why haven't you got the Cold Berry on? Colberberry and the Kassib's 100% better. Um, we could have protected there as well, you know. And we lose a Trick Room. And we lose a Lunala. Just like that. Okay, well. I see wind. It's not the worst. We'll get Coco back onto the field at least. Um, and we get Electric Terrain up. Kind of. Feels like Groudon will come onto the field now, though. Um, so whether we keep Stack Attacker out, or we could go for the Continental Crush, to be honest. It's just where is the Groudon going to come in? Um, I want to get rid of the Finny if I can, so I'll Thunderbolt there. Um, we could Trick Room again, but I think at this point it's not really going to do us any huge favours. We could Substitute as well. Um, the Sub might be nice to get up, to be honest. Uh, or we could just go for the Rockium into the Eveltal. I'm going to go into the Eveltal because I feel like the Groudon might come in there. Yeah. And if we catch it with the, yeah, the Continental Crush, still going to do a ton of damage. Not, we're, like, not intimidated. We should get rid of the Finny as well with this Specs Thunderbolt, which hopefully catches my opponent a little bit off guard. Um, Thunderbolt. Come on, Specs. Show your power. Excellent. Okay, be interesting to see how much damage we can do to this Groudon, and if what my opponent's fourth Pokemon is, if it's such a ninja, um, then we need to preserve Coco. But we've got we got Ray in the back, so it's not like the worst. Veltal's in extreme speed range, and I think after this, Dragon Ascent is probably likely to pick up the knockout onto Groudon, so Ray could potentially come in and clean up. Yeah, Dragon Ascent will get it after this. Okay. Let's see. I don't expect Eveltal to come in now. But if it is Shininja, it is. Okay. Ah, that makes things a bit more tricky for us because we might have to lose. We might have to lose Coco here. Because I don't think we've got Wide Guard, have we, on stacks. Um, and I can only Thunderbolt. I've got to get Rayquaza in, because otherwise we've got no way to hit the Shininja other than Stack Attacker. So Stack Attacker now, without the Sulk, is obviously a big, a big, a big thing to keep, keep safe. Um, and we don't have Protect, so we can't leave it in front of a Groudon, unfortunately. We'll have to switch out into uh, Ray. 
Well, I mean, Raid deals with Shininja as well, but, you know, we want to try and preserve two things if we can. Stack Attacker coming back in as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Precipice Blades. It does hit, unfortunately. At least we've got two options now against the Shininja, and I don't think it goes for a Toxic. It goes for a Toxic! Okay, predicting the switch, I'm going to say, because otherwise... You're toxicing into a, um, a new stack attacker, which is never going to be a thing to do, is it? Because of the steel type now. Maybe they don't know that. Who knows? Who knows? We can't poison a steel type. I think we're going to be all right, though. No, there's no worry about us taking down the ground on with the Dragon Ascent. Um, and we can just go for a Stone Edge into the Sheninja. Um, Mega Roll. Dragon Ascent from this range will definitely get the ground on. Because it's just ridiculous and a ridiculous attack. Now I'm worrying. Now I'm like, is it going to take it? Is it? Is it going to take it? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we're all right. I'd imagine we will be. No! Ah! Okay, well, it's not the worst. I mean, Ray can deal with this whole t uh, I mean, Dragon Ascent would be the worst thing. Uh, Dragon Claw. Forget about Ally Switch all the time. Ninja, I hate you. I hate you. Uh, this Toxic's going to be a little bit tricky to get around. I mean, we do have the berries, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, miss, miss, miss. It doesn't miss. And now we lose. Stacks. Okay. We're getting properly bopped on by Shininja Groudon. Oh, okay. Um... Do we chase the ground on down or do we chase the Shininja? I mean the ground on's probably not got really a way to hit us to be honest other than fire punch. I'm gonna go for the Dragon Ascent into the Shininja. If we can just remove that from the field and make, thing make things a lot easier. Um, okay, it's going Shadow Shinik. Hmm. It's going to be very, very close. Very close. Depends if the Eveltal has Sucker Punch and decides to go for it. Depends how much this does as well. Ugh, Procna Berry. Probably going to see some double protecting shenanigans go on here. I don't think we can do it because I think... The Toxic Tick plus a Fire Punch will get us. Um, all my opponent really needs to do is Fire Punch with Groudon. Uh, like, double attack here. And then they've got us. Oh, this is... This is just... All we can hope for is the Groudon protects. The Uvelto goes for an attack into us. We, ex I'm going to Extreme Speed because I've got to hope the Groudon protects here. If the Groudon protects, then we could win this still. The Uvelto protects. So I think we lost... Because the Groudon probably protects as well. Yeah, it's a toxic tick. And I don't think... There's nothing we can do to get around the Foul Play um, or Fire Punch. And then the Toxic will get us this next turn. God damn it, god damn it. Um, hmm. And my opponent's played it really well. Uh, we've just got trapped in by Shininja. And the Ally Switch kind of caught us off a little bit there. Um, let's Dragon Ascent Groudon. I don't know if the Veltal goes for a Sucker Punch. Nah, it goes Foul Play. So, there we go, my friends. I'm a bit sad about losing this last one, but I think it was one that we could have... Like, a best of three will make that so much easier. That's the thing, like, best of one. We know, we got so much information about the team, but I think getting caught out best of one, obviously, um, they're the ones that I want to go into a best of three with because I think that's an, a one we can easily manage with all the information that we've got. And my opponent might come back and say the same thing about us, but I think knowing that the Z moves on the Evelto makes things a lot easier and it makes our decision making a lot better. We wouldn't lose Lunala so early on, which I think gives us a better 
match up against other things uh, late game. Um, but we'll end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a bit of a longer one today, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much again to Will for the team. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more from this uh, team, so uh, stay tuned for that. Have a great day, whatever you're up to. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next one. So until then, my friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.